Alright, what's up guys? Fallen Winter here, and doing deck profile on Nova Grapplers for Standard. Um, they're very mediocre in testing, like, I feel like they have a chance at winning, but compared to a lot of the other decks, it's very hard to win with the deck unless you high roll and just generally don't get beat up by like damage triggers and stuff like that it's kind of the most unlikely to win i guess so starter wise you run the battle riser it's pretty much their only option unless you're on the hero one but it works with the other riser cards uh, i am running the like riser focused one not really the hero one since that's more of a budget option Round 4 of the Twin Blader because they are your PGs and you want your grade 1 space for rear guards because they are very important. I'm running 8 front triggers because front triggers are good because they are useful when you damage trigger and they are just really good for making your lanes hit because the hardest thing in this deck is to make your cards actually hit them after they hit damage trigger. That is half of the reason why this deck is not great. It can make a lot of attacks, but they don't get very big by themselves, so once they damage trigger like once or twice, a couple of your lanes may not even be able to do anything. I'm running four crits instead of heals because I kind of like the aggression and just being able to have crits in the deck does let you apply a little extra damage or pressure which puts them at a point in the game that you want to actually win with. You can of course run like a lot of different like lineups. I've seen a bunch of decks run different stuff. You can run heals in the deck. It's just um, you don't have as much aggression because you have to like drop either fronts or crits and stuff to do that. You can run more crits if you want, but I feel like fronts are kind of more important to your deck because it just lets your lanes uh, hit more guaranteed. You can also run like the extra like vanilla draws if you want to try drawing more into your rear guards because that is also important. It's a little more varied in terms of trigger lineup and stuff just because it has that many options, but also it's just... There's, there's more things to work around in this deck, so... The options are there. For my grade ones, I am running four of the Riser Custom. This one is the one that lets you attack on first turn of the game when you normally can't by taking a minus one and putting a card into soul. This is um, also good because it restands in back row when you do stuff. If you're worried about Kagro, you kind of don't need to run this card just because it's a really easy target for them to swing at or retire with their skills. Um, it's it's the most expendable card in my opinion, but it's just in the way that my locals plays it isn't usually the case because there's a lot of OTT and stuff and not as much Kagro, so I don't have to worry about retiring as often. Um, running three Jet Riser on call or when another rear guard is called this gains 3000 power each time something gets called so it's pretty easy way to make a like big booster or a decent booster or just to make a lane out of a grade one he's just a solid card to run i run three trans riser you're gonna notice i have a lot of three ofs i'll explain why afterward um this card is kind of a backup plan if you're lacking counter blasts because they uh, played the like damage resource game against you and try to keep you from getting that stuff, he can soul blast two and let you counter charge one. And he also allows your lane with uh, perfect riser and stuff to hit 23s, which matters sometimes against four stacks just because it lets you hit the better number against them. And then lastly, running three of Rocket Hammer Man. He's pretty much here just because he's a hero. In most cases, I don't actually use his ability. Um, just because soul is actually pretty important in the deck. You only have so many uses of it, and rewriting isn't usually 
your first choice to do stuff. He just has a hero in his name, which is important for other cards to work. For grade twos, I'm running three of the high-powered custom riser, or riser custom. This one drags out your battle riser, your starter, behind him in the same column, uh, vanguard or rearguard, and on hit, you can put a battle riser from your rearguard and counterboss one to restand one of your other rearguards. He's just a solid option overall because he can give you a booster uh, by bringing up Battle Riser and he does apply pressure for Counter Blast and does not require soul. Then we've got one of your beat sticks, the Iron Killer. He's just a 14k beater. If you have three or more rear guards, Vanguard or rear guard circle, and it counts himself. So you only need two other cards as long as he's on rear guard and he's a 14. Comes in handy. He's just a very generic but decent beater. Another beat stick, uh, three cup bowler, another 14. Uh, you just need a hero um, on your board anywhere, and he's a 5,000 on Vanguard or Rearguard. He's solid as long as you have another hero. That's its biggest drawback is if you don't see one, you're kind of in an awkward spot because he's just a 9,000, and he's vanilla. I run three Burst Riser because our locals is kind of like aggressive. They don't really play the damage resource game, so I just threw three of them in since he's extra attacks and stuff, and Counter Blast uh, isn't usually an issue. So this one is just when your Vanguard attacks, you Counter Blast one, Soul Blast one, and he stands himself, and if they are at four more damage, he also becomes a 12,000 when he restands. Um... He's just a decent extra attack, so paired with Perfect Riser, if you have enough lane, rear guard lanes, he gives you a third one. So it gives you seven attacks. Uh, like I was saying, I run a lot of three of just because I wasn't sure um, about how I felt about some of the like uh, trigger, like how many cards of things I wanted to run because I didn't want to drop cards too low that I didn't really see them. So. It just ended up where I could run pretty much three ofs of everything, and I'm just trying it out for now to test things out a little bit more. Um, depending on your like local meta or what you expect to see, you can kind of play around with uh, trigger lineups or sorry, uh, grade lineups where you can you know drop drop risers to just add like one ofs to everything else back in here. Uh, in, since Jet Rise is decent, you can increase copies of Rocket Hammer Man to increase consistency, and this one is just decent for the unflip um, if you're playing a safer game, since they run these for the damage control, uh, where they give you a lot less counter blast to work with. And the Grade 2 lineup, you can drop Burst Risers, since if you're worried about damage control, they you probably won't have too many times where you can use it on top of Perfect Riser to increase consistency of just all of your beat sticks. So you can run eight beat sticks and you can just have an extra high power custom riser where it's just a decent card and is on hit and does not require soul like the other cards. And lastly for the grade three lineup you've got four uh, Perfect Riser. He's just a really good card. He's very uh, consistent in what he does which is just on attack counter blast to stand to front row um just really solid skill where you just get extra attacks in and stuff um pretty much is the only one of the few restanders right now in the game so getting six attacks in one turn is really nice and on hit, if you have a Riser and Soul, which you run a decent amount of, it get on hit on whatever you're hit, attacking. It counter charges and gives plus five to one of your units. So it's pretty decent for making lanes hit when people damage trigger or things like that if they actually let it go off. The one awkward thing in this deck is that you're 12, so sometimes. It's hard to come by boosters. Um, sometimes he has to swing by himself as a 12, which isn't optimal, but sometimes I want the rear guards to hit more than him 
just because they still have to kind of guard him anyway to uh, protect themselves from me damage trigger or me checking triggers. And lastly, I run the four of Battle Door Fighter, which is just mainly there because he's a really good rear guard. Where Vanguard or rear guard, if you have three or more rear guards and you swing with him, he's just he's a he gets plus five when against Vanguard, so he's a seventeen by himself. Um, he's also decent on the Excel Circle because he swings for twenty seven by himself to Vanguard. Um, his main skill is you counter boss one, so boss one on Vanguard once per turn, and you choose one of your rear guards. Or choose one of your units, sorry. You can choose Vanguard as well. And when it attacks, they have to guard with two or more cards during that battle. So even if it's a 5k guard, they have to guard with a 5k and something else, or a 15 something else. If they need to PG the attack because they're like at 5 damage or whatever, they have to uh, call the PG, call another card, and then discard for the PG skill. So it's just... It's not a situa it's a very situational vanguard skill and you usually don't want to ride into him. He's not bad for a re-ride late game if you can afford the the card from hand to ride again. Just because uh kind of boss one so boss one while they're um at five damage to use a skill if you can afford it is kinda of devastating just because they have to uh block attacks and stuff like that. Especially if you're low on counter boss and can't afford to use Perfect Riser again. Um, but usually I just call him to like rear guard, normal rear guard spaces just because he doesn't need a booster to swing for 17. And that's kind of important. Or just having him with a booster just because that also hits over 20. Uh, 22 or 23 which is about the threshold for uh, damage triggering in this deck which is not good against this deck because... Um, once they hit over 20, once they damage trigger and become over 20,000, usually that's about where your lanes start sucking a lot. So that's pretty much the whole deck. Uh, you can run a tech like Ashura Kaisers instead of like the Battle Doors. You can try running like some Maximum Risers, which, uh, when not boosted, gain 10,000 and stuff, so it becomes really, really big on... The Excel circle, but they don't have a Excel marker, so writing it is really bad. Um, Assure Kaisers are not consistent in terms of Perfect Riser, just guaranteed restanding stuff, but it does not cost Counter Blast to use its main skill, so it's potentially better, but also it means you're not checking triggers, which is not great either. So I, I kind of just prefer the, the consistency of the 4 Battle Door and 4 Perfect Riser. But you can like mess around since realistically the deck doesn't do really great. So uh, you can kind of mess around with stuff and see minimal change in my opinion. <laughs> uh, if you guys have questions, comments, and stuff, let me know. And we'll see you guys in the next video.